What we're dealing with here is a 1966 Dodge D100 pickup truck. And about two years ago, Mike Finnegan and I flew to Colorado and picked this thing up and drove it all the way home for an episode of Roadkill. The thing is, I was trying to convince Finnegan that this is the coolest vintage body style truck that you can possibly find. And I don't think he was buying into it. Speaking of body style, this thing is often categorized into a kind of Dodge in this style that's called a swept line. But this is not a swept line because those are full bodied beds. This is a step side, which was known as the Uteline. It's got the polyspherical 318 V8 in the thing. Granny four speed. This thing's ready to go, except for the fact that it sat in our back storage lot for two full years. And now, apparently it doesn't run and the clutch pedal snaps right to the floor. So Dulcich and I have some work to do to get it running. In addition, a buddy hooked me up with this early Ranchero that a guy had built in like 1972 or something. I haven't really seen it because as you'll find out, it is covered in trash. So what I wanna do on the show is get the D100 going, drive to Tracy, California, unbury this car, and then once we lay eyes on it, we'll know if Maybe we'll fix it up on Roadkill Garage, or maybe it'll just be a flipper. I'm not sure yet. One thing I know, we're gonna have fun doing it. You know why this is the Uteline Dulcich? Uh, because uh, it's a utility. It doesn't have much utility when we're pushing it. Basically, I wanna un-roadkill this thing a bunch. It's got a lot of just trash in it and just goofiness. But first, we have to make it run. Fuel, air, spark, compression. Second. What? You wanna do be a solid bro? Okay. The headliner. You want to take that out before we even make it run? Well, I know, because I'm going to be in there cranking while that's just raining a whole bunch of distress right on top of my head. That's like grandma's sofa turned into a headliner. I know. <laughs> it's the worst I've ever seen. You know, Finnegan was squeamish about the headliner, too. OK, I am being a prima donna, and you might as well say a mask and eye protection. But I brought you a mask, too. Yeah, but if I don't wear it, I'll look cooler than you. <laughs> oh, I feel I can go to town on this. Oh, man, it's, it's really, like, rains a bunch of fuzz. Look at all the fuzz raining off this. Decay all so of that. Ah. <laughs> man. There we go. That was a big piece. Oh, wow. That was good. Ah. <laughs> hey, Steve. Yeah. You suck. Why? I mean, uh, you should do the vacuuming. That's what I'm doing. I'm wrangling the vacuum right now. We're detailing this thing flawlessly. It better run. Steve, that was an all-show, no-go maneuver. I know. <laughs> Make we it run. Good. <laughs> OK, many people might not know this, Freiburger, but one of the signature series of these Dodge trucks is a vertically opening hood. I know. So when you need to remove the 318. <laughs> the and, offending 318? And put a 440 in there instead, you don't even have to take the hood off. OK, here's the, a lot of varnishy gas pouring out of the carburetor. I think there might be an electric fuel pump. <laughs> it looks like this line is going to a filter here. Is it going through that mechanical pump or no? Sure looks like it to me. OK. We made a supplemental fuel system, mm -hmm. ran the fuel line up over the roof. There's a piece of hose there, but okay. no There's pump. No pump or anything. It just goes to that tank in the back. There's no electric pump. I think let's pull this off and see if it pumps, right? Yeah. But I mean, now that we're all detailed out, that is kind of unsightly. What? The hose going over the top of the cab. Oh, I know. It was unsightly always. But we can fix that later. I want to make it run. See, OK, OK. He, he keeps I... worrying about all the cosmetics, man. I just <laughs> want this thing to be beautiful. You paint one car, and the next thing you know, everything's got to be flawless. <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> all right. I just work here. I'll, I'll check the fuel system, all right? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna pull the fuel line off and uh, I'm gonna crank it or he will and we'll see if the fuel pump actually works. And then we'll also get a sense of how bad the gasoline is, as in like varnished and stuff like that. 
the tool. Oh, it's not bad. I'm flying in. Oh! oh! That's like black. Wow. Okay, that's not gonna run. No way. Well, as long as it's apart, let's, uh, oh, it stinks. Let's squirt some into the uh, bottle and see what it looks like and see if the pump works. Okay. Oh! Really? That's so bad. Go again. Okay, stop. The pump works fine, but Great. wait till you see this gasoline. Oh! It looks like a Guinness. It is exactly like a Guinness. Oh. <laughs> it is. <laughs> It's even got the head on top like the draft. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, yeah. That is junk gasoline. No wonder it doesn't work. My god, run. I've never seen gasoline look like that. How does it do that after just sitting? Wow. Like... All right, let's just run it off a can. OK. We got a can full of gas, rubber hose going to the mechanical fuel pump, and a little ether for good measure. Let's find out if it works. I know what to do. You've got that technology? Clear? Yep. What is with the exhaust leak? I don't know. I don't remember anything about that. Really? OK. Will it run again? Not without ether. OK. All right. You'll notice the technique there, which is we we're trying to keep it running to burn all of the bad gas out of the float bowl. And uh, it's a really dangerous thing to do, because if it backfires, it can backfire up to the can. But we lived. And uh, I think we need to keep going, right? Yes. Fire it. I would have thought it would have run through the float bowl by now, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah. It might be kind of gunked up. What do you think the asphyxiation risk is from 1 to 10? Oh, carbon monoxide poisoning? Yeah. I'm immune. I know, but what about the whole film crew? Ah. Those guys aren't Freiburger tough. <laughs> you guys want open doors? Yeah. OK, this is ridiculous. Remember this truck ran and drove perfectly two years ago? I didn't even think to check the water. And it turns out that the entire heater hose broke off from here on the manifold all the way over here. How that heater hose from there to there got missing in the last two years with nobody touching the truck, I don't know. How it happened when this one is super flexible, I don't know. Who threw it away, I don't know. But I do know. We just ran the thing for like two minutes with no water in it, and now I have to fix it. To cut the hose? I am cutting the hose with a razor blade as we speak, and it is puking all over me. I can give you a Gunsu knife that has just the right ability to cut hoses perfectly. Hey, Steve? Yeah. Put a hose clamp on this quickly. <laughs> yeah, let's just put that guy on there. Oh. Put your thumb on it. Yeah, it's five eighths as well. Yeah. Okay. Ah. And now it's done draining. How convenient. Yes. <laughs> if you procrastinate enough. It is not a roadkill garage until we've got coolant all over the floor. Okay. Now we got it plugged off. Time for water. And then I've got an idea. Let's see if there's oil in it. You know, when we store these cars like this for too long, I should just assume that they are a full junkyard find and approach them just like that. Go through all the basics. Are all the fluids here? Is the gas wrecked? Basically, we create our own barn finds just by ignoring stuff. You know what, though? It doesn't happen as often as it used to. We could do a show called Will It Run? Could be a real hit. <laughs> Will it run? Yeah. Will it run? Ta-da. We're good. The water problem is solved. We're going to try and make it run on actual gasoline for the second time. Go. All right, here goes.
We've officially grown up a bunch. Yeah, I do not remember this exhaust leak problem. It was probably there, but I don't remember it. Yeah, it might need a little uh, cleaning out of the carburetor with some brake clean. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe take the idle mixture screw out and spray in there. Steve went all out and cleaned up the carburetor. Once he's got it running, I'm also going to use brake cleaner, which is flammable, and spray it around the base to see if we've got any vacuum leaks. If there's a vacuum leak, you'll hear the engine change tone. Importantly, the brake clean is non-chlorinated. You don't want to use the chlorinated stuff, because when you burn it, it makes phosgene gas, and that's like nerve gas, and you die. I don't think we have any vacuum leaks. That's surprising and good. Adjust the idle, Freiburger. I think we're good. Not bad. Oh, man, I'm super happy that thing is running great. I really liked the Poly when we had it before, when it was driving. I hope it has its same finesse now. It might even be better. <laughs> it's better already. I know. It sounds great, though, you know, so. Next up, I think we got to make the clutch work. OK. This truck has hydraulic master cylinder for the clutch, which is something I always used to think of for later model stuff. But obviously, they did this back before time began. So our hope is that we can just pop the lid off the master cylinder, top it up with fluid, bleed it by pumping it a bunch of times, and then go on our merry way. How's it feel? It doesn't take much pedal effort. Try the brakes. Rock solid. That's what we need. Oh, don't over rev it. Don't worry, I won't. This thing won't even rev high enough to hurt itself. I want to see what it's got. It feels pretty strong. Yeah. Can you now see? Oh, you should try the brakes before we have to have them. How's the swerve? <laughs> How do you like that? It's got all the brakes. Can you now see why I was hesitant to give up on the Poly 318? Yeah. This thing runs like a champ. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did we already clog a filter? We've got no gasoline <laughs> in, in the carburetor. Let me have a look. I'm just going to pull that filter out. I was totally not expecting any problem. No, me neither. I thought it was flawless. Yeah, this fuel pump might have croaked. We might need to feed it with the other one. But look at all the sediment in that baby. I saw a whole bunch spill out the gasoline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, if you think about it, these filters are now performing as intended. Just think, if you had an EV, you wouldn't have any of this fun. No. <laughs> Let's try it again. OK. Doesn't puddle is good. But there's no, uh, there's no fuel in the bowl. No. Our mechanical fuel pump must have just died. Or the soquero in the gas tank might be completely uh, clogged up. <sighs> clogged once again. You know what I'm going to do is pull the hose off and see if I'm getting any squirt. Now what's happening is that it won't start again. Obviously, there's no fuel in the bowl, and it wasn't that first filter. So we're wondering if either the sock in the gas tank clogged up or fuel pump died. So my next trick is going to be taking the hose off and finding out if the fuel pump squirts. Yeah, Steve, there's no fuel in the last filter. The one up by the radiator hose? Yes. All right, crank it. I'm going to see if it squirts. Nothing. Zero. Yeah. So it's either the sock or the pump. So that means my whole fantasy of making this stock fuel tank work is probably going to fall apart. What's our next plan of action? I say we put the uh, electric fuel pump on the line coming from the tank point the other end at a suitable vessel to collect gasoline and then turn it on and see if gasoline gets sucked out of the tank. All right, Steve, I already have a clue for you. When I took the hose off the hard line, it went <coughs> What does that mean? Ah, oh, that means it's plugged up in the tank. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh -huh. This underhood is very echoey. Echo. At this point, we could have a concerto. It's like the Hollywood Bowl. It is. You know, like, if our la, whole... La, 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 Yeah. OK, <laughs> ready? The sock in that tank is garb. 
So let me explain this. There is a tube inside the fuel tank that's on the sending unit that picks up the gasoline and sends it to the front of the car. They have a sock on them from the factory, which is a little plastic thing. Screen, and basically. And screen, and so it's not as aggressive as a filter, but that's what it does. It keeps out the big chunks. But when you have a bunch of rust in the tank, that all gets stuck in that sock, and you get what you see here, which is no fuel flow to the front of the car. Here's the scenario. We gotta get up to that guy's house Saturday. So we're gonna have to go back to the roadkill version of running the rubber up and over the hood into our boat tank that we already bought in the bed. Okay, at this point, we start the engine. Uh-huh. We got fuel. I know. I thought I heard squirtage. There we go. Solved. Now we can finally do our road test to see if there's anything else wrong with this thing. Man, this thing, it pulls. Got plenty of pep. I know. That's all you need. I know. Now you know why I didn't want to put the 440 in it. It's fine. Yeah. Good enough for what it is. 